other thing, I get my first grip here. Once I get that first grip, you're gonna circle, you're gonna snap, you reach for that second collar grip. Now I'm here. Once I get here, it's gonna be hard for him to do much. Even, even if he wants to pull, pull guard on me, you can see how I'm pulling him up off the mat, right off the back here. So these are two solid grips to use, even when your partner's a guard puller, right? So if I know my partner's a guard puller, what I'll do, I'll crowd their space with grips like this here. So this is, not even, this is good for pulling guard yourself or giving a guard puller a hard time or trying to stop someone with good takedowns from the feet. So again, one, snap, two, and I'm here heavy. When it's time to pull, you can pull with your right or your left. It doesn't matter because you have two neutral grips now. I'm gonna step out to either side though. That's the first thing. That's the thing that doesn't change though. You have to step out to the side. Like I said before, some of you guys are still doing this here and falling back. You're gonna get your guard blown through right off the bat. You have to create an angle. So right from here, one or two. So when I step out, it's time to go. One, two, and I'm pulling here. Now from here, start getting your posture back here. Good, yeah, he's trying to get his posture back here, good. He's in a tough spot here. I switch, I chop, and I pull. If his arm stays in between like this here, you can still go chain and ball, or something else we worked in the past here, we're gonna attack the arm. Umaflop is there, or one of my personal favorites, I'll fall back and attack the arm right here. Real strong arm ball. So just know if the arm stays in between, you have options. But if you wanted to, you still go chain and ball, no, not a problem. One, two, and I pass the grip off here. Now, once I get to this grip here, we're gonna post. Now we're gonna stand up in base. Basic jujitsu, right? Hip escapes, bridging, and standing up in base here. I lift the hips off the mat, I pull my left leg back. If he falls down to his side, which I find most of the time they do, I'm gonna drive my knee in between the two legs here. And then we'll pause there. If they stay on there, if they hop up to that outside leg here, what I like to do is reach inside, pull the leg past my hip here, trip around the outside, and just drive them straight to their back. And again, step back into that same position here. Are there any questions about pulling into the chain and ball grip right now? Give it a shot. Beautiful, on three, one, two, three. So let's say we're here, we're still on our, uh, our, on our feet. Same idea though, right? I'm gonna look for my first initial grip here. Once I make that first contact here, I circle out. Circle out, a little snap down. So I circle, snap here. Just just the, that just the, uh, that alone right there is enough to get your partner moving and a, a little dazed and confused on their feet. Now from here, my second hand goes to the collar. Do not have a double collar grip here. Nice and tight, elbows are in tight here. When I get here, I can really weigh down heavy on my partner's posture. So if he tries to posture up here, I'm making him work hard here now. It's a really good grip here. If you have someone that you know has good takedowns, it's a good way to kind of stop them in their tracks. I remember when I was doing judo, my judo coach told me that the green were really big on making this grip here in judo to stop big throws from happening. And I use it in jiu-jitsu, it works very well. So again, I'm here. One, snap, two, double up here. Once I get here, we're gonna pull guard the same way as we did before. But now I have two collar grips, so basically you can pull whichever side you want to pull to. You pull to your left hip or your right hip, it doesn't matter now. But now, you're in a neutral position where you have both collars. So it's really up to you where you pull. So let's say I get my two collar grips here. Again, the same idea, I'm breaking this posture down, I'm weighing down heavy. When I'm ready, I take the same step to the outside, whichever side you want, one or two, just to create an angle here. Don't do this number here, guys. Some of us were still doing this a little bit here before the first technique here. Make sure you take that little side step out. It makes a huge difference. So again, I got my two grips here. <laughs> side step out, one, two, I'm pulling here. And when I pull here, before, we were focusing on corkscrewing a little bit more. This time around, I'm focusing on pulling his upper half towards me as I push the lower half away from me. So I'm pushing the body in two different directions here. I always say we're going to create pressure from on bottom too. We always talk about putting pressure on top when we're passing the guard, but you can do the same when you're playing guard. So from here, I'm going to apply pressure on him by forcing his body to go two different directions here. I push the lower half away, so I pull the upper body in. Now we end up in this position like this, where he's posting and his posture is extremely broken here. Now, once I pull here, one of my favorite go-tos is coming up onto this leg here, this left leg. 
What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna switch my hands for a split second. My left hand's gonna let go of that far collar grip and I go above my right hand. I go one and two. Again, I'm here pushing and pulling here. But when I'm pushing and pulling, I'm really, I'm really serious here. Do you feel comfortable here? Not a great time. Not a great time whatsoever. Now I switch. As I switch here, guys, I'm gonna chop my right leg up, then down and pull his arm or his lapel across my body as you would a lapel drag from the feet. Now I'm here. Once I come up here, you can see I'm, a, I'm already to the outside of his body. I got a strong angle on him. From here, one of my favorite suites, which we've worked with before in the past, is the chain and ball grip here. Right from here, my right hand is coming in behind his leg here. Could I wrestle up from here? 100%. You can come up from the single leg here. But since we have the key on, why not make a stronger grip here before you come up on that single leg? When I reach around the back of his leg with my right arm, first of all, I'm keeping my forearm behind the bend of the knee here. So I can keep his posture broken even further, right? I'm pulling his knee in past my body here. Now my left hand is gonna pull the collar to my right hand here. And he wants to posture up at the same time anyways. So when I pull this in, I pass my right hand right back to that collar around the outside of it. From here, I can let go with my left and poster. Try posture up here. His posture is still compromised now. Everyone see this here? Now we come up on the single leg here. All I'm gonna do is stand up and base. Very simple, basic jiu-jitsu here. I lift the hips off the mat and I pull my left leg back. When I pull my left leg back, so I'm gonna hook his left leg with my left leg. So the hips come up, I'm gonna hook. As I hook here, I come up. Once I come up here, we have a really strong position, guys. Um, sometimes the person just falls straight to their hip. But let's say if they, if, if, yeah, that's fine. if they fall to their hip and they accept the sweep here, just remember, you want to cover over the top of this leg here. Don't let the person get the guard back. Drive the knee into that leg weak position here. Now what I like to do is keep the grip here for one second longer so I can control the head. When I control the head here, I like to reach over the top here and pull my elbow in behind their head, pull my right hand out, Lamborghini door, arm right here. Now I can go back to the cross face and start looking to pass the guard here. If he stays on his feet here, if he pops up to his foot here, that's fine. What we can do, we can look to uh, pull the leg to the outside, kick this leg out, and again, now we end up in a leg drag type position here. So those are two ways that you're gonna find yourself uh, or the situation you're gonna find yourself in after you come up with that chain ball grip. Either they accept the sweep, or they pop up to their single leg, or to their outside leg. But even so, once, they're, once they hop up, it's, it's tough for them because you have their leg attached to the upper body. So again, one more time. With it, you just gotta practice. Practice, 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 and make sure that we're falling to the hip. Even, even just now, when you guys are still falling a little straight on with your partner, I want you guys to know the difference here. If I pull guard straight on here like this, yeah, it's good, it's still strong here, but once he pops his hips back here, he disconnects my foot here, he's gonna be running around my guard, which is not fun. Or he times it and just jumps over it, just doing you know, like this cartwheel pass, all the people's guard is really cool. That's usually how it happens, right? You wanna make sure you drop to a hip. If you drop to a hip and apply pressure off the guard pull, it's gonna be hard for the person to move off the guard pull. Does that make sense? spoke about yes okay cool now what i wanted to focus on was clearing hooks when you're passing the guard we just work the technique portion of, of, of today's session starting from the feet now so you pull guard you got to your to your guard position nice and safely and you sweat you came on top as you saw you can come on top and end up in the leg weave and all that but let's say if you sweep your partner and they just push your way, now you're back into like an open guard type position. So like kind of like a fresh start now, like a reset. Going your back real quick. So today's focus is I want to talk about carrying hooks. Hooks can be sticky and can be hard getting around with hooks. When I say hooks, I'm talking about these kind of hooks, right? And they can happen from everywhere. They can happen from here. They can happen from here. They can happen from butterfly half. They can happen when he's playing straight on butterfly guard. Hooks are everywhere, right? So I want to get you guys comfortable posting and using our hips to float to help us get around some of the sticky hooks there. So we're going to start off in a position where it's it's um, a little bit tighter. So for example, let's say he's playing open guard, whatever it may be. Another good way to get close to your partner, I know we've talked about many times before now, HQ, one leg in, one leg out. One of my favorite ways to close off the space and get closer to the partner. We can also 
force yourself into your partner's butterfly guard and start smashing their hooks. Now, when I say smashing the hooks here, the hooks are strong when you can keep his heels away from his butt in the back of the thigh. He wants to be able to elevate the legs here to start lifting you and tilting you from side to side. If you're dealing with somebody's hooks here, the goal is to keep his heels glued to the back of his thigh. So let's say I'm passing his guard here, right? Contact, like we usually make for HQ, leg will make grips here on the shins. From here, what I'll do sometimes, I'll stay heavy on my toes, and I'll drop my hips in over the top of his hooks here. One and two, just like this. I'm just connecting myself to those office spaces. And once I get myself connected to the hooks here, I can drop my chest down, and just start playing by taking the space away from them. So I'm here, this is a good way to, one, get comfortable moving around someone's butterfly hooks and sticking hooks all together. And once I get down to this position here, guys, something I want you guys to do is keep your hands in the armpits here. So I'm gonna keep the palms of my hands inside the armpits. No grips are necessary here. You just keep your hands in here. So this works E, no E, whatever it may be. Once I get here, guys, we're gonna look to pull back with one arm, whichever arm you want. I'm gonna pull back with my left arm. When I pull back with my left arm here, the goal is to look to get my forearm inside of his hip and thigh. Here. Once I go inside here, I'm gonna hug his hip with my left hand. Once I hug the hip here, guys, I'm gonna let you step up with my left leg. So just so it's easy for us to remember. Right, right, left, left. So, left arm comes back, one. As I come back with the left arm, my left leg's gonna step up. But when I step up, notice how I step up in towards my partner. Again, to keep his heel to the back of the stop. If I step up, Feeling that pressure here. Now I'm going to disconnect this hook. Here. This hook's still sticky though to the back of my thigh. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to look to lean towards my left hand side and lean my forearm to push this leg down towards the mat. So see that? Look how this hook is not as connected anymore to the back of my thigh. And this is just a good idea that you can use everywhere when you're passing the guard. Use these concepts of leaning in towards the hook. Use your forearm inside. You know, another, you know, you see a lot of the, the strong guard passes in jiu-jitsu today, always keeping the arms like a T-Rex, right? So you're doing these kind of things where they're pushing the hooks down, not over committing, reaching for the, the head just yet. So now I'm here, I just connected, disconnected my, or his hook to the back of my left leg here. Now the next step here, how do I get around his guard from this one position here? This is where posting and floating from this flight at. My right hand is gonna post above his left shoulder here. Now my lower half is heavy, right? It's gonna be hard for me to move side to side if I stay this far back. So now that I disconnected that hook here, I'm free to go. I'm gonna dog off the loop, ready to run around and chase the ball, right? Right from here, right hand is gonna float. When I float here, you can see how my hips come up. When the hips come up here, now it's easy for me to whip my left knee underneath my left arm. One and two, right? It's a nice knee slice here. Once we get here, land over door, as we love here, right? We control that lower half, the, the lower back here, we can't hit the skate. You guys know I love the cross face, the cross face, and we pass the guard. Right to the side. This is a really good way to start getting comfortable moving around butterfly hooks and sticky hooks. So again, we're gonna start here. We're gonna start in the butterfly guard, and we're gonna always stay on our toes. When we stay on our toes here, we make it harder for the person to push you away and extend you back out. We're gonna drop the chest down here. When we drop the chest, we wanna stay inside with our two arms. When I, stay, when I say inside, we're gonna stay inside of his two legs here. I'm gonna go around the outside. So I drop down like this. My hands go into the armpits like this here. I make him look like a steer crow. Now it's harder for his hands to get to my neck. And when I'm ready, we're gonna pull back with whichever arm you want. One, two. Once I step up, I'm posting here, leaning, letting that knee fly straight to the other side here. So a very simple way of getting around your partner's sticky hooks. So again, we're gonna make it a drill. So we're ready to go side to side. We put you guys on the clock for one minute. One partner going for a minute, then we switch top to bottom. Well, I want the partner to be working both sides here, right? If you're a white belt, you were blue belt, give it a shot. If you just have a stronger side, that's okay for now. Work the stronger side. But if you're triple bone above, we want to see you guys working left and right. So right from here, Chest down, pull back, step, lean, post. My knees and go underneath the arm. One, two, and I whip right to the knee slice, I pass. Now I reset, I'm gonna go to the other side. Pull back, one, two, lean, 
I post, my knee goes underneath, right to the knee slice, and I pass. Now I go back to the other side. This is a great drill to help you get around sticky hooks. So again, we're gonna start here, in the butterfly guard, on my toes, chest down, hands into the armpits here, just the palm of your hands here. You don't have to do this or this, just here. When I'm ready, pull back. I'm gonna hug the hip here, and my form looks inside. For those who have been um, to the classes before with me, you guys recognize this position here, right? So when we go into the knee cup in the HQ, we're here like this. We always do this number here to avoid the knee shield. So it's always that same concept, right? Of just keeping that outside leg away from us. So, I'm here. One, two, lean as I post here. I'm posting above that shoulder where I can float. When I float here, it's easy for me to whip that knee across and avoid the knee shield. If I try knee slicing from down here, I'm gonna encounter the knee shield, 100%. When I go above this hip line with my knee, look at my knee. This man is chest right. When I whip through, I'm way above his hip line there. So this way we can get closer to the guard path, to the side control um, at a higher percentage. So again, one last time, I'll give you guys a shot to go. We start here. One, two, three, I pass. Then I go to the other side. On here, one, two, and I pass. Right to my side people. I go side to side. So my purple belt and above, I want you guys working left and right. Blue belt, give it a shot. If you feel comfortable going left and right, perfect. If you don't, stay to that one strong side for now. Not a speed drill right now. Take your time with it. I want you guys to feel the technique, loading, posting, moving those hips side to side. Um, take your time with it. One minute each part. We're going to do a few rounds here. You guys ready? Any questions? On three. One, two, three. In De La Hiva. Sticky hook. Sticky foot. How do I get around these two legs here now, right? From here, we're going to roll the legs down the mountainside. Don't just try to stuff the legs down. It's hard to do that. We're going to roll them to the outside like this. Everyone see that? Now, once I've done this, it's easier for us to get around into the HQ. Look how he's still keeping his foot on my hip here. If that does happen, you can always bring your knee under and then back over the top. Once I get here, before you do anything else, I want to be concerned with his Delahibo hook. So before you do anything else, we're gonna make a grip at the base of the pants here, so this way I can guarantee that hook stays out. Next step, hula hoop. I get slightly to the outside of his left knee, and I reach for the near side collar, and I start pushing and pulling here. You see when I start pushing and pulling, his hand naturally comes off my ankle, right? It doesn't make sense for him to hold on. But if he does hold on, now I can start peeling back with my left heel. It's gonna be hard for him to hold on to it. Now I'm ready to commit to my right hand side. If I pin my two grips here, and I pinch my two knees here, and once I get here, I pivot. When I pivot here, I'm gonna to pivot to face his legs here. As I pivot, I'm gonna windshield wipe. One, two, and up in this position here. The right knee steps up. I knock the leg out the way with my right knee. Knock it and lift. One, so now when I lift here, I pull him up into the seated position. Why? Now it's harder for him to get his legs back in front of me. And now two, I'm gonna go directly into a knee on belly. Boom! Windmill out, Lambo door. You can stay on knee on belly if you want. Or slice off to the side control here. So if we don't know how to work around this position here, you can get caught in sweeps, get, lose, your, lose your base, and um, we don't want that to happen, right? So let's say we're in the butterfly half. And butterfly half looks like this. He has a butterfly hook here. He's got his other leg in between my two legs here. And usually we see people looking for underhooks or overhooks here. Or actually overhooks here. Grab my belt. Lift your left hand. Load me up. Reach around the outside of my right arm. Or my left arm. Lift your right. Come up. Hug it in. Sweep you over to your, to your right. Boom. We see this happen a lot, right? It's a pretty common position. Then in Nogi, we see it happen a lot with uh, things associated with like the false street position, right? So we have to be aware of the position, whether it's gi or no gi. Now, the way we're gonna handle this position here, it can be done gi or no gi. Like this last one, we just work. Works gi or no gi. Um, so let's say I'm here. He's got a good sticky hook here, and he's doing his thing. When I'm here, I wanna stay on my toes, 
practice like we did before. I want to, I want him to feel my weight from the beginning. If I just stay back on my two knees here, I give him the the, 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 the space to move around. He has, he doesn't feel any pressure on him, so he can move around a lot easier. Start setting up his grips, his angles, his underhooks, whatever that may be. So right from here, what I want you guys to do is hop up onto those toes here, just like this. And now my right hand is always going to stay around the outside of this leg here. I want this leg to work hard. So my right hand is going to grab the belt, the skirt, the gi pants, whatever you can anchor your hand down on. It's great. Grab their underwear, whatever. It doesn't matter, right? Just make a grip. Once I get here, guys, I'm going to hula hoop my chest around the outside of this leg here. See, a lot of people get caught up in doing this here. The legs are strong. It's hard to pull that leg and fold it all the way down towards the mat. When I get into this position, you can relax it, don't you? Once I get into this position here, I'm just gonna hula hoop, boom, just like this here. And this is enough, right? Where I have my chest slightly to the outside of his left leg now. So now I'm gonna start leaning my head toward the shoulder here. We're now just feeling my weight. His left leg is carrying my body weight now. From here, what I want you guys to do next is look to engage in the hand pump. Now, if you lean your weight forward here, his hands are gonna come up and start framing again. Right? Whenever you start in someone's space, they're gonna fight hard for that space. They don't wanna lose their space. So when you lean your weight forward and start collapsing your way around the outside of this leg here, their hands are gonna come into, into play and start pushing you away. <coughs> Which is what we want, it's what we're looking for. So again, if we're here, anchor this hand here. When you anchor it, it's gonna be harder for you to move those hips out and start creating angles to put this butterfly hook into, into other spots here. So I anchor one and I hold them. And I hold them here and I start leaning in. Now when I start leaning in here, guys, what I want you guys to do is actually pop up the knees like this. So, so when I pop up here, I lean up. His hands are coming into play now, right? I'm gonna pop up into the knees like position here. So now I should feel more of my weight. Now the next step here is to engage in the hand fight. When I look for the hand, I'm going to swim my left hand <coughs> under and control his wrist and pin. Boom. Now when I pin here, I'm pinning his hand to the mat, but above his shoulder, like he's raising his hand and asking a question in class. When I pin, just like we did before, I'm going to lean my weight in through my left hand, which is going through his right hand. So I'm pinning, and I'm letting all my weight go through his right hand. So he's trying to get his right hand back, try to get the right hand down. Hard. It's very hard. People are going to think you're super strong, which you are super strong, but really what's putting that, that hand down is our body weight. All my weight is going through my left hand. So one, once I'm here, I'm confident it's going to be hard for him to really do anything to me, right? He can't take my boots away. He needs his right arm to take my boots away to sweep over to his right hand side, right? He needs his hand to maybe underhook this leg. You're going for like ball street type positions here or spin underneath me. He can't do any of those things if I put his hand above his shoulder. He's stuck here. Once I get him pinned here, I'm going to float up and swim my left leg inside. And look how I make a hook behind his knee with my left foot. One, and then two. I'm going to set my right leg to the outside. You see that? Once I get here, I'm going to switch the hands off again. It's very similar to what we did That's in the last technique here. Once I get to this one spot, I here go. Smash pass to my left here, so I love the knee slice here. The knee slice you won't expect it, you can expect it to maybe pass this side if you're already facing here. I post my right hand, so I leave the hip, I post, and I switch the underhook position as I look back over to that same knee slice we just worked on. Now from here I go rainbow door, I cross face, I pipe him straight to the mat, kick the leg free, right to our side control. So again, this is a real safe way to do certain times, like the positions we're working on today, that it is safe for you guys to start posting and leaning your weight in through those posts, right? That's how you get comfortable with float passing. Floating your hips, moving your hips around. Um, of course, in positions like closed guard, you put your hand on the mat, it's dangerous. You get arm bars more. But in positions like this, certain positions, it's, it's safe for you guys to post and lean your weight above your partner's head and shoulders. It's just a good way, or a, new, uh, a different way to look at passing the guard. Um, now, let's just work one. I, I actually shared it the other day on my Instagram, the swivel pass, which is another really good pass. This one's from HQ, though. So all, we work butterfly guard, we work butterfly half guard. Now, you can always have, your partner can always also have sticky hooks from my like Delegiva position. So let's say, um, I like going to the HQ, right? So let's say I get myself into the HQ position one, two. 
and he's looking for his Delaheva hook. One, two, he's looking for this. Sticky hooks can be, can come in from everyone, even when we get to the HQ. So from here, we always gotta make sure that we keep popping those hooks out. When I pop those hooks out, something I like to do here is use the palm of my hand, like we did with the butterfly guard at first, how we kept it in the arm tip. I keep the palm of my hand inside the shin right here. And I always try to roll his leg outwards. So don't try to push on the knee here. If someone has a really good Delahiva guard or Delahiva hook, it's gonna be hard to just clear the hook by just pushing down the knee. If I try to push the hook out itself, that can be dangerous. You can get dumped over to your side. So what I like to do here is just stay heavy mid shin and let it roll out. Everyone see that? A little bit easier for me to control that leg and manage that leg and coming back in. So if you find yourself in the Delahiva guard, let's see we're here. We're gonna start here. We're gonna start with a partner with a Delahiva hook and the foot on your hip. This is a good guard for him right now. What I want you guys to do on top is lower your, your, your hips, your hip, uh, your base, nice and low. Your two hands are gonna go to the shins here. Look, I roll them apart from one another. You guys see that? Now we step into the HQ. When I step into the HQ here, guys, if you have someone that's got good, good leg work from here, we're gonna look to make a grip at the base of the pants here. This way I can keep this leg away from coming back into a deli hula hook. My right hand can go to his near side collar. Now, when I go to the near side collar, I hula hoop my chest to the outside. See that little movement? Nothing major. I'm not trying to stuff the leg all the way down to the side. A little hula hoop here, so when I grab the collar, I lock him into this position even further. Look, I push and pull here. Everyone see that? From here, I'm gonna start walking out to my right hand side. Look how I kick my leg back here. When I start walking out, I start peeling back with my left heel here, which makes it harder for him to hold on to, especially when I'm keeping him on his right hip with this left hand grip. So as I start peeling back, I'm gonna start walking out to my right hand side. Once I get here, I pinch my two knees together. So here I'm separating the legs away from one another. So now his sticky hooks can't come into play when I keep the legs away from one another in positions where they can't hook. Right now his foot is stuck right between my two legs here, in the dead center. Not really much you can hook onto there, right? His right leg is too far outside now, keeping it away with my left hand. My right hand is still pulling his shoulder off the mat. Someone can have a stronger guard when they can keep their shoulders on the mat and stay on their side here. If I start yanking the shoulder off the mat here, it's gonna change the whole way they play guard. It'd be harder for them to play guard altogether. When I get into this position here, I'm pushing and pulling here. Now, all I do here is pivot on the balls of my feet here. As I pivot here, I bring my left heel up and over. Once I step around the outside of this leg here, I'm gonna bring my right knee in front of this thigh, right here, pull up as I knock that leg out the way, right into the knee on belly position here. It's one of my, one of my favorite guard passes to hit, especially against people who have really solid guards. Just keep the legs away from one another. So again, one more time, I get to, uh, I encounter his Delaheba guard position here. Right? From here, if I start reaching for the collars too soon here, you're gonna get lifted, you're gonna lose your base, you might get swept, your back taken, whatever it may be. So from here, I'm gonna sink my hips down a little bit. One, two hands on the shins here. I'm gonna try to roll the legs away from one another. Imagine that this is the, the peak of the mountain, the mountain sides. I'm rolling his legs down the mountain sides here. See, I'm trying to separate the legs away from one another. Now I step over into the HQ. Once I step over here, what I want you guys to do is make a grip at the base of the pants. Inside, keep your elbow in tight, don't flare it open. We can underhook and maybe start attacking the arm. Keep his elbow in tight and just push that leg away. My right hand is gonna look for this near side collar. When I reach for the inside or the near side collar, I'm gonna hula hoop. Once I hula hoop, small little movement here, is gonna make a big difference here. So you can push through with your hand and roll your shoulder and chest to the outside. One, then two. The guy start pulling up on his shoulder as I push the leg away. Start peeling back with my heel. Once I peel back here, I pinch my knees together. At this point here, what I'm doing, I'm just keeping both of my hands heavy now. So I'm not pulling up anymore. I was pulling up at first in this position. As I pinch, peel back. As I start walking out to the side, now I pin. Now I'm gonna pivot, heel up and over. Once I get my heel up and over here, if he lets me pass right off the bat, I'll take the guard pass, right? But usually they try to keep a frame where their leg 
across my hip like this here, right? Now, I don't want to let go of any of these grips here to help me clear that leg. I'm going to use my right knee to step up in front of that knee and thigh to help me clear that leg out of the way. As I step up, I knock it with my right knee as I pull up on the collar at the same time. One and two. Now I drop right back in with my knee on belly position here. I like to windmill off that, cop, that pant grip, right to my Lambo door, right to my side control. So it's a little bit more advanced, right? Some questions on the position before we go back and start drilling. Another two, three minutes, then we'll move on, guys. On three, one, two, three. So guys, real quick, uh, it's, it's important to have a good partner too to help us drill techniques correctly, correct? So, he's gonna do the technique, I'm gonna put him on the spot. We're good. <laughs> so now, let's say I'm playing butterfly half, right? Which I like to play butterfly half myself. When I play butterfly half, this leg here, I keep my look in. And usually when I play butterfly half, I'm looking to sit up right away and reach for a good strong belt grip. And look where I'm keeping my left knee, around the outside of the box, right? That's like lifting here, sweeping, all that good stuff. Or, people like to sweep, they start pulling this leg inside, coming up. One, two, you start getting to this position here. Go back. <clears throat> so, since I'm the corner playing butterfly hat, I get my hook inside. I want to keep my left into the outside of the box, right? So he anchors his hand down. And if I try to get my knee to the outside, he's looking hard for me to do that. He's made this barrier where I can't clear his whole body right off the bat. Now he's going to hula hoop. Hula hoop. Boom. That doesn't look like much. So some of you guys on bottom right now are doing this too. It's not a really quick look, right? If you do it exactly, there's no guard. I can just pop around my guard. So when you hula hoop, go hula hoop. This is what's going to happen. This is a real quick look. Here. I'm not going to want to clap my leg over the down. I'm going to fly far now keep my left leg up. I know if it goes down this far, I'm dead in the water at that point. So the person on the bottom will keep their knee here in a realistic situation. Now this is where moving around the, uh, the body comes into play, posting and floating, right? When he's ready, he's gonna pop up to a knee cup position there. Boom. Now he starts leaning his head forward, which gets more weight over the top of my left leg here. You can see that, right? He's gonna force me to do what? I gotta frame it. When I frame, he's a hand fight, post my hand here. So now if I try to reach for his leg, so let go of this leg, uh, this hand for a second. If I reach for this leg here, I have an opportunity to maybe go into the false street type position here. Or just spin under, go 50-50, backside 50, whatever it may be, right? Or if he doesn't post, or grab this here, maybe I can collect this outside arm and still maybe hit a butterfly sweep, maybe. Once he makes this post through my hand here, all those options are much harder for me to get to now as the bottom player. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna stop fighting now. I'm probably gonna start doing this flip, flip exactly. That's why he wants to take anchor down. Now when he's ready, to switch. Now notice, you see it? I got him off his face a little bit, right? How do I do that? Look at my right foot. You don't see my right foot? Look, I'm driving my toes into the mat. Even though you guys can't see my hip coming off the mat, but that's the purpose of me driving my toes off the mat. Help me lift up and pull him up over my head. Once he switches the legs in and out, one, two, that's dead in the water. I can't drive off my right foot now. Drive, uh, drop the left into the mat. This is stapled now. I'm stuck here. Now it's time to go. He's gonna switch the hands here. Again, my main focus, all my attacks are pretty much towards you guys. That's why once we're ready to start passing, we're gonna pass the opposite way. I'm gonna switch the hands here. One, under, two. Yeah. No, that's good. So by the time he goes, he's so far ahead of me, there's no catching up for me. So the bottom player right now, I need you guys to be good partners. I don't want to see you guys, I don't want to look over and see you guys doing this here. That's, I mean, that's not going to happen. And if, it do, if you do play guard like that, I don't know what to tell you. All right? <laughs> Keep that knee up. Be a good partner right now. So another couple minutes here while we have a butterfly hat dangerous position if you don't know how to go about it. When I get here, I anchor, or I'm sorry, I anchor the hand down and I pull a hoop around the outside. Now, when I go to pop up, I like to pop up using your two hands, so I keep my hand, right hand by the hip. This left hand, I can pop on his bottom leg here, pop up into the knee slice position. You see that? When I pop up into the knee slice position here, I lean my head down, when he starts to fighting and push me away, I sit inside and post. 
Once I post, I lean forward and I pummel my left leg inside. And I make sure to make a hook behind his knee. Now from here, if I try to stay here, it's feel awkward. If I pull my left foot inside, at the same time I kick the right leg out. So now I'm here, stay going down with my left leg. Here. So it's time to pass. Could I pass to my left? I could, but I'd be better equipped to defend the guard pass in this direction. Right? I'm gonna go right to the knee slice. Now he's so far on to his right hip, by the time I start knee slicing back over to his left hand side, he's too late. He's too far behind the eight ball at that point to catch up. So I will always go to this side. So from here, I post, I switch, and I whip. Once you get here, strong cross face, and we're passing right to the side. Are there any questions? I'm dealing with the butterfly half right now, guys. I'm dealing with someone's butterfly half, which is common in me and no D. And again, if it's no D, just hug your hip here. That's fine. The whole goal is to get the chest to the outside. So again, we're here like this. I'm on my toes, though. That's not going to change here. Always on your toes. And once I get here, you want to try to take care of this lower half first. So we anchor, one or two, and I hula hoop here. Once I hula hoop here, guys, I pop up into that knee slice position here. So that knee slice here, I push in. When he goes to push away, go push away. We find that wrist and I pin it. When I pin it here, guys, I'm gonna swim and pummel my left leg inside. One and two as I kick my right leg out. I'm gonna replace my left leg with my right. Or, no, the other way around. No, that's right, right? I'm replacing my right with my left. Once we get here, we're gonna switch the hands. So I want to pass to my right. And as we saw with the last drill, I need an underhook. So if I start passing from here, could I knee slice from here? I could, but I won't have an underhook here, right? So I gotta switch the hands here. And my right hand is gonna post above the shoulder. One, two. As I switch here, I'm whipping the hips at the same time. So you guys saw this last on the last show how important it is to whip the hips. You gotta whip them strong. So when I switch, I'm whipping the hip straight through Leandro Low style. Now I land, I grab his lower half, we cross face. If you want to, you can overhook here, you can grab the collar, really, really whatever you like to do. But now we're in a deep knee slice and we're definitely passing the guard at that point. So again, one more time. And now we're in the, in the cross side position, right? So based off this last pass, we landed in the knee on belly. I love the knee on belly. The knee on belly is a great place to attack the position from, right? You're gonna get the person to open up when you hold the knee on belly. So let's go over some knee on belly details real quick to help you maintain the knee on belly the proper way. So let's say I passed the guard like we just did here and I landed in this position here, right? I landed here. I'm gonna be nice to me. But when I get here, what you guys wanna focus on is keeping your foot of the knee on belly and leg hooking the hip. If my knee on belly looks like this here, still a knee on belly here, but if he pushes his, his two hands against my knee here and breaks that angle, it'd be hard for me to follow up with anything. And usually I follow up with like another knee cut, but I'll show you guys that in a second. Mm -hmm. So when I land here, my foot is hooking his hip here. Now we landed with this grip here just, just now, right? What I want you guys to do here is let go of this hand grip at this point and go to the near side or the far side hip here. So I go with my left hand, Follow my hand on the hip. And I'm going to push down that on that far side hip as I pull up on the collar. When I pull up on the collar here, it just makes it harder for me to get onto his left hand side to defend the knee on belly. Again, he needs to get onto his left hand side, go hip escape, and push that knee off. Yes, that's what he wants to do. And us pushing and pulling here to make it harder for him to do that. One and two. Now, if he starts working back to recovering a half bump, right? He's bumping, he's bumping. And the cool thing about this here is that you can follow your partner. Holding the knee on belly like this here. My knee is pointing in towards his far shoulder too. <clears throat> Diagonal line, and my foot's hooking. Try to bump and hip escape. I can follow, I can follow, I can follow, I can follow. Now, if you feel like you're about to lose position here, you make a good bump and hip escape. I can fit my foot back between his two legs. What if I bring my hips back towards my heel, and I hip in towards his hip? I go one, then two. So I'm right back into the knees like this. So we don't lose the position altogether. If you're a competitor, this is a great way to rack the scoreboard up, right? Now, wait here three seconds, pass point, another pass point, go knee on belly, more knee on belly points, rack it up, and boom, boom, boom. 
But let's say we do pass again. One, two, I pop up, back to the on belly here. What I like to do here, eventually, when they can't move this leg, they start trying to push against your part and they're like this. You try to keep, you try to push your weight any, any way, anyhow. So when I get to this position, I get this, this reaction a lot. From here, what I want you guys to do is look to clear this hand in between your two legs here. Now before I clear it, I'm pushing and pulling, I work this left hand inside, just like this. See that? Now, another reason why you'll get this reaction here is that when I hook this arm here, what's this thought process? I might step over the head for an arm bar or more, right? You guys agree? If I do this here, he's in trouble. So now he knows, once I hook this arm, that that's a threat. So usually the, part, the person on bottom will post against that far leg to stop you from doing that. So from here, I post this hand down and I step my right leg up. When I step my right leg up, real simple, I'm gonna look to let go of the arm and grab the crown of his head here. When I grab the crown of his head here, I'm gonna throw my right leg over his left shoulder as I fall to my right hand side. One, two, and I pull this arm up with me here. Now from here, I can start attacking my telephone arm bar, the reverse arm bar here. You're gonna use the, the blade of your wrist here on the elbow, pinch his hand in between your shoulder and your neck, evil grip here and pull down. Great option. Or you can start looking to lock up your figure four here. Bridge up, clear the arm, grab the shin, readjust, pinch your two knees together until we get our tap. Either way, it's a win-win for us, whether you attack the arm or the neck. So again, one more time. One of my favorite ways to catch a submission, key or no key. There's no key here, it's not gonna be pulling up on the head here like this. But, since we have the lapel, I'm pushing the pull in here. And he's driving, he's trying, he's trying his best to get that knee off of his belly here. Swim, the hand inside. So even if it's like a shallow little underhook like this, that's fine. That's all we need. Again, worried about us stepping over to attack the song. Now from here, my hand's gonna turn up too. I turn my palm up and catch the tricep here in my hand. And now when I catch that tricep here, my forearm's gonna stay along his rib cage here. So I can do a bicep curl. Clear, step, hug, and I drop in. When I drop in, don't drop in straight back. The guard pulls today, right? We're gonna drop it in an angle. So I'm gonna swing my right leg and fall heavy to my right hand side. Look how I swing into it. Everyone see that? Now from here, you do have the opportunity to attack that razor arm bar, telephone arm bar, reverse arm bar, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to pinch his hand in between my shoulder and neck. And I'm going to find that elbow. Because before, we were hugging the tricep, doing that bicep curl. So you know the elbow's not too far away. Once you land here, just slide your hand down. You're going to feel the elbow right away. One, your thumb down. So you can keep the blade of your wrist along the outside of that elbow. Gable grip here. Pull down. I mean, I'm grabbing a, a guillotine grip style here. But I want to keep, see, I wants to rotate that uh, wrist there. So I'm going to keep my head nice and tight to keep his hand in position here. The same way you would when you come up on the X guard. Keep that leg in, in, in position. One, two, and I'm pulling down here. Or if you want, you start lock, locking up the triangle here, right? You let the person come up, you readjust. One, lock it up, lift up, arm across. I'm pinching my two knees together, forcing him to tap. But either way, whether you decide to go for the arm or the neck, you have to go for it. Again, it's not expected. The person's always going to expect femoras, baseball bat chokes from there, maybe a dart. Um, the last thing they're going to expect is you coming in flying for a triangle, for them, right? Uh, let's give it a shot, or you guys want to see it again? Yeah, okay. So again, pass the guard. And let's say I pass the guard on the side control, right? If you're going to find yourself doing side control, as we all know, you like to hit on hip pressure here, like you're stalled out. All you're gonna do here, explosive push up here. Knee on the shoulder, knee on the hip, push up right to your knee on belly, like pop it up onto the surfboard. Now I'm here. I'm hugging the hip with my left foot, knee pointing towards that far shoulder. One, and drop off to the collar, push and pull here. When I push and pull, it makes it easier for us too to make an under from this arm. If I can play on his back here, it's hard to get into that arm. Difficult, right? But when I push and pull here, it's a little bit easier to swim that hand inside. We'll take that hand inside, 
bicep curl. I'll grab that tricep. Now from here, let's say he starts worrying about the arm attacks that are coming. Yeah, he starts pushing my leg away so I don't step over the top. Right? Clear it, step. Hug. Drop right into your uh, your flying triangle from the on belly here. You have the arm right here, or if you let them roll all the way up to their two knees here, you adjust, you adjust, <clears throat> you block your figure four, jujitsu toes here where you flare your toes up, pinch your two knees together in a straight line, and it's game over there. Let's give it a shot. On three, one, two, three. So um, let's come this way. So you come in my half guard right here. Okay, perfect. Let's start in the knee slice. Perfect. Okay. Let me know when we're, when we're live. All right, so we're live here. Um, we're here in Buffalo, New York. We're working on some top secret uh, techniques here. So don't tell anybody about this technique here. What I want you to do when you're on bottom playing knee shield and your partner's up in the knee cut position here, right? I'm going to look to control the outside sleeve just like this. When I control the sleeve here, the goal is just to hold it in place. I'm not going to try to pull the arm across and start making an angle. So if you do that, they're going to get suspicious and start pulling the arm back. So I'm just going to hold the arm in place here. My left hand, I like to go to the far side collar as a frame and as a grip too. So this way, if he starts coming uh, coming forward here, you can always push away just a little bit here. Now, what I, what I want you guys to do is look to reset this whole position and bring your partner's knee down to the mat. Now, how do we do that? I'm gonna look to push away with my shin. See my knee, my knee shield right here? I'm gonna push away. When I push away, I'm gonna swivel my right leg under and make this hook. Once I make this hook here, I still have my left leg over the top. I got my right foot hooking the ankle. I'm gonna pull them forward. As I pull forward, I extend my legs back. As I extend my legs back, I'm gonna sit up and I punch this hand up across as I pull myself in. As I pull myself in, the next step is to get my right knee. So I let go of that hook. My right knee's gonna kick out behind his side. I'm gonna nudge him forward. As I nudge him forward here, I'm gonna lift up on my top, or on my left knee, bring him over to the top side. As I lift up, he's gonna roll right over the top. He has, he has no post. We have this hand control the whole way through. Now we come up, right into my favorite position, half guard smash. So again, one more time. Do a little bit, a little bit quicker now. We're on the knee shield here. He pops up to the knee slice here. I gotta defend, so I go one and I go two. I push away. When I push away, I'm gonna look to swivel and make a hook underneath his ankle. Now I'm gonna pull forward. As I pull forward, I'm gonna get his lower half lighter, easier for us to move his hook back. One. Two, as I punch this across at the same time. Now look how I pull myself into the half guard smash, basically. And usually the reaction I get is the person grabbing my head. So I grab my head with your right arm, I try to smash you, bring your weight in towards me. As they bring their weight in, look at my knees and I nudge them forward and I lift up with my left knee, rolling him over the top. It's hard for him to stop because he has no post. I just follow on top with momentum, chest to chest, cross face, underhook. Now we're on top, ready to start passing the guard. Yeah, of course. Where you just stepped, like, did so a... So if I, if I can avoid it right off the rip? Yeah. If Maybe I you walk them in, back this way. Yep, but if I step it in and wedge him behind the lasso leg, I'm going to assume that his lasso leg, I'm not going to assume, I know that more than likely you can make the lasso of the leg that's not being crowded in behind. If I crowd him behind his right leg, oh, I think you said it's four. I'm only like, worried about this, like, coming to the lasso, right? If he pulls his leg out, whatever that may be. Whatever side that may be, if he pulls his top leg out, he can get to the last. That's what I try to do as soon as I step in. I wedge and I grab and I pull back. So it's like so beginning to do all those passes that I have to work on today. If he does catch me in the last, I'm going to try to step over the other side. One, two. Once I step over the other side, I start walking out and hand fighting until I can grab this collar. Once I grab the collar, I pull as I swim my hands to the outside. I try to swim my hand from out here. I don't want to say it's impossible, but it's hard to do. It's very hard to do. Once I start breaking the angle by pulling this outside shoulder towards my hip, it's going to be a little bit easier for me to swim the hand out. When I go here, one, I start swimming the hand out, and now I start stepping my leg out. Oh, that was cool. I'm using my, my leg as a wedge on his belly, pull my arm back and break that grip. Thank you.